Praise God. Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this lesson in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, a quick lesson here. Then we're going to go to Google Meets tonight and talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We could spend more time on Google Meets because I don't have to use storage space on my battery on my, on, from my phone like I do here. Okay, so turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Start at verse 1. We're going to jump to verse 4. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay, he wants you to know God has given his people spiritual gifts. And he wants you to know how to operate in and use spiritual gifts effectively. Mm -hmm. So spiritual gifts are very much a present day reality. It's the same God, you guys. The same God. Okay. And they can be a powerful spiritual tool in overcoming the powers of darkness and bringing Christ's saving and delivering message to the people. So the Apostle Paul told all believers to become informed and educated about the use of spiritual gifts so that we will use them responsibly and maturely. Okay, let's go down to four. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There's different gifts, y'all, for different Christians, but the same spirit passing the gifts out to us. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Okay, there are difference. There's healing ministries. Obviously, that's not my ministry. My ministry is a teaching ministry, a learning, growing ministry. It's where you grow in your knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. Okay, I don't, I don't seem to appear to have the gift of healing. Okay, I have the gift of knowledge and wisdom in Jesus Christ's kingdom to help pass it to you, to help teach you understand that's my gift. Okay, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works in all. Okay, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each for the profit of all. Okay, for to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another Christian, faith. He'll give you the gift of faith. By the same spirit to another, gifts of healings by the same spirit to another, the working of miracles and to another prophecy and to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another in the interpretation of tongues. OK, so the specific purpose, y'all, of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit described here is to profit the body of Christ. Write that down. The purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ, which is you and I, is to profit the body of Christ, to edify, to build up, to encourage. OK, so these nine gifts are available to every single believer as the Holy Spirit distribute, distributes them throughout. Okay? That why do you think that I'm not gonna get on this right now, but where do you think the thing is the, the, the story, the lie of Santa Claus came from, flying around, throwing gifts out to everybody? It's mocking who is really there from the beginning, the Holy Spirit, who does give you gifts. Okay, so Satan takes anything God does, y'all, and twists it up and turns it evil and, and, and demonic and takes all the glory away from God, y'all. That's what Satan does. So forget about Santa Claus and his flying reindeer and gifts flying all over down everybody's chimneys. The Holy Spirit, the moment you become a Christian, you start seeking his word, reading, studying, praying. God says, boy, this person's really trying to seek me. Well, he said, if you seek me, you're going to find me. You're going to find me and I will give you gifts. Different ones to you and different ones to you over there. You might get healing. You might get discerning of spirit. I'm going to give you different gifts because you put it all together. And that's one heck of a body right there. Okay. So we should actively welcome his gifts. Expect them and embrace them. Write that down. Here's some scripture you can write down for that. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. And Ephesians 4, 11. That we should welcome them actively. Welcome the gifts of the Spirit. Expect the gifts of the Spirit. And embrace the gifts of the Spirit. Because they're gifts from God. And He's going to give them to you. We're, we are each to have one or more. 
All right. But one and the same spirit works all these things. It's the same spirit y'all doing all this. Distributing to each one individually as he will. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are available to be used by believers in Jesus Christ today. Today. God hasn't left us here without any gifts. He knows we need him now more than ever. Yeah. So God does not always give each person the same gift. Okay. And not everyone operates in all the gifts, okay? He gives gifts to everybody who becomes a Christian. But some people have fear. Like, oh, I don't know if, I, f you know, you'll feel like in your spirit. You'll be praying and worshiping. You'll be like, oh, I really wish I could speak in tongues. I really wish I could, man. I wish I knew how to. I would. You'll be think thinking about it. Well, he's giving you that gift. So you just do it, you know? And um, on Google Meet, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to teach y'all how to, expect the gifts and how to welcome them okay so when you get a desire for a certain thing you might be like man i wish i could oh i oh man i just got a strong feeling i wish i could put my hands on people pray for them and then be healed oh i want to pray for that person so bad that's a gift of healing god is giving you so you walk up and you do it you put your hands on that person you step out in faith you say you know i would like to pray with you I just got this strong burning desire to pray for you. Put your hands on them. Say, in the name of Jesus, heal this individual in the name of pray hard, y'all. And step back and watch the miracles of God take place. You know, so you have to exercise your gift. Use it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. Okay? So God doesn't always give the same gifts and not everyone operates in all their gifts. They let fear and different things like that hold them back. No, God keeps telling you to have faith. Have faith. And when you're feeling that feeling of this certain gift, then he's telling you, do it. Do it. Okay, each gift of the Holy Spirit comes from Jesus Christ, y'all. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned by Paul are as follows. Number one, the word of wisdom is a supernatural utterance at a given moment, which supernaturally discloses the mind, purpose, and way of God as applied to a specific situation. Number two, the word of knowledge. It's a supernatural revelation, information for a person or group of people about a specific thing and has to do with an immediate need. Another gift, number three, is the gift of faith. The gift of faith is a special outpouring of supernatural faith for the release of a miracle. Number four is the gift of healing. Are those healings that God performs supernaturally? Number five, the working of miracles is a manifestation of divine power beyond the course of nature and law, natural law. It is a divine gift to do something that could not be done naturally, the working of miracles. Okay, it's a gift. Yes, some people have them. Another one, number six, is prophecy. And that's something that Paul said, please, every single one of you believers, pray for that gift. Please pray for that gift. Pray hard for it. Because the gift of prophecy gives words from heaven to the whole body of Christ. So it edifies and builds up the whole entire body of Christ. The gift of healing uh, is for individual people to individually heal different people. But the gift of prophecy is for the whole entire body. It edifies, builds up, helps, encourages the whole body. So he said, please, y'all, pray hard and ask God for that gift. Okay. Prophecy is a supernatural disclosure, an edifying revelation, sudden Holy Spirit-inspired insight that prompts exhortation or a word of comfort. All right. We can have number seven, discerning of spirits. Is the ability to discern the spirit world and especially, and especially to de detect the true source of circumstances or motives of people. Okay, I have a good discerning of spirit gift from God. Like I was able to de gift, uh, discern very quickly, y'all, my circumstance that looked like it would be Satan attacking me hard, right? Looked like attack from Satan. But I see discerning of spirits. It's God all up in it getting me to move on my butt. Getting me off my butt to move in his kingdom. Yes, yeah, God doing it, y'all. So he'll give you discerning of spirits. Number eight is different kind of tongues. This is a gift of speaking supernaturally in a language not known to you or an individual or in a heavenly language. Okay. It also includes praying and singing in the spirit. Okay. The gifts, you can pray in the spirit, in the tongues, and you can sing in tongues. 
It's a heavenly language, y'all. Only that God and your spirit will understand. That's it. Because I'm going to tell you something. Before you were born, and I'm going to tell you something else Jesus shared with me when I was with him 17 years ago. I want you to understand this. There is a heavenly language, y'all, that Satan can't understand. And you as a human don't understand unless God reveals it to you what you're saying. It's called tongues. Yes. And before you were ever formed, yes, you listening to me right now, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Before I was ever formed as a person in my mother's womb, God knew me. Okay. And we had a heavenly language that as a human, we don't understand unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. So it's a gift. It's a gift available to everybody that wants it, any Christian that wants it, y'all. But, but a lot of Christians don't have it because they're like, oh, I feel like I want to do that, man. I would wish I could pray in tongues when I'm praising God. Well, when you're praising God, if you feel that way, then bust it out. Bust it out because ain't nobody going to come and pop you upside the back of your head and make the words fly out your mouth. And there ain't no Holy Spirit going to come in and take over your body like you're demonically possessed and burst the words out your mouth. He gives you the desire to do it. The Holy Spirit is mind, will, and emotion. He has those traits, and so do we. And that's what he works on with us, your mind, will, and emotion. So you'll be praising God. Father God, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you. You'll feel like, man, I wish I could speak in tongues. Well, then you just do it. Don't matter what rolls off your tongue. Just do it. Just ah, da, 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 da. do whatever. And then let God turn it into your own language. But don't, don't not do it because you're scared. It's a gift, y'all, from God. Understand that. But before you were formed in your mother's womb, y'all, you understood this, okay? Understand that. So, the nine, uh, get the nine gifts, the nine, I mean, the gift of interpretation of tongues is the gift from translating what the Holy Spirit is saying through tongues, okay? And this gift can be used by both privately and publicly, okay? And if you jump over to 1230, 1 Corinthians 12, 30, it says, do all gifts, I mean, do all have gifts of healings and do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret tongues? No, no, all can speak in tongues though. It's a heavenly language, but all don't do it. All don't do it because there's reasons they hold back. So the verse is often misused to downplay the gift of tongues right there, y'all. Clearly, Paul wished that all believers spoke in tongues. You can read it in, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, he wished that all spoke in tongues, but there's things holding some Christians back from doing it like fear, okay? And, and he wished that all preferred speaking in tongues in his private prayer life, okay? This question of speaking in tongues refers to the fact that all should not seek to speak with tongues in public meetings. That's what that means. The private use of tongues for self-edification was being confused with the use of tongues in conjunction with interpretation of public uh, public worship. So that verse in no way minimizes the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues, y'all, I'm telling you, Jesus is telling you through me, it's for everybody who is born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. But people don't do it. They want to. And then they don't do it because of fear or they feel rejection or they feel embarrassed, or something like that. Something from the enemy will stop you from speaking in that language, okay? And, and he don't want you to do it because it's a gift. It's a language that you understood before you were formed in your mama's womb that you and God communicated with. God's not going to come talk to us, y'all, into the body in this language right here. He will interpret it for us, right, in our language we understand. But God's heavenly language Okay, is not in English or Chinese or Japanese. Nothing like that, y'all. Because that is a curse. That's a curse. It happened at the, at the Tower of Babel. There was a language, one particular language. And as they, you learn about the Tower of Babel. Okay, so a curse was placed on them. English, Chinese, Japanese, Mexican, all these different languages. It's not God's language, you all. So it is available to you, each one of you Christians that are filled with the Holy Spirit, to speak in tongues especially those of you that desire it. You already have it. If you want it and desire, wish you could, you already have it. So you just pray, think of Jesus Christ while you pray, and you bust it out your mouth, whatever comes out. Let the Holy Spirit roll off your tongue. Just bust it out. 
Okay, I started out with, I wanted to do it so bad, y'all. I remember on this back deck, I wanted to do it. So I was praying. I said, da 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 I didn't know what to say. And I felt kind of funny, y'all. I was like, man, I feel stupid. Well, of course, on the flesh, you're going to feel stupid. It ain't a fleshly language. So I said, no, Kim, stop it. Keep going. And I put my hands back up. I saw Jesus. And I just went, da 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 And then he started turning it into another kind of a role and another kind of a role until it turned into my own language with God. But you don't, you don't do it, y'all, because you feel funny. You feel embarrassed, kind of, kind of weird. You know, that's Satan. He don't want you talking in that language to God, y'all. Because he don't understand it. He can't see what God's doing when you speak, to, when you pray in tongues to Jesus. It's a gift, y'all, from God. It's a gift from God. And if you're full of the Holy Spirit and you know it, Satan can't get in you to put no language out your mouth. No, you got God in you. Holy Spirit's in you. There's no room for both. He ain't going to allow that, y'all. Okay, so start using your gifts. Start asking Jesus, what is my gift, Lord? Please show me my gifts. Because he wants you to have your gifts, y'all. And Satan even tried to steal that, what Jesus is doing for his children, and turn it into Santa Claus. Take the glory off of Jesus, put on a little fat man in a red suit, flying on re flying reindeer, dropping gifts everywhere. No, the Holy Spirit gives you gifts, y'all, and the real gifts that you really need. All right, if you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you, and, and, and then ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Bam, it's done. You don't got to keep asking him that. Ask him one time. He's God, y'all. He's God. All right? What you got to do is believe it and say, thank you, next. Say, thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Now, step out in your face. Start reading the Bible. Start studying different topics. Start writing it down, understanding what the Scripture means. Start doing God's words, you guys. Step out. Okay? In Jesus' name, God bless you. I'll see you all 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight on Google Meets.